So a Glidescope Ranger, this is what you'll be using at uh, St. Mary's and St. Joe's. Okay, with the Glidescope Ranger, you have to use this, what's called a rigid, or a, we call it a Saturn stylet. All right, this is a very, very rigid stylet. It's not going to bend. Matter of fact, this is what I carry in my vehicle. This is what I use pretty much on every innovation, whether I'm using a Mac 4, you know, DL, or a Glidescope, or, you know, even a C-Mac, you can get away with using a rigid stylet. When you need it, and, you, and they're very anterior, this is not gonna bend like that 14 millimeter malleable stylet. Yeah. Okay, so the glide scope, you would go ahead and turn it on. Technically, I turn it on as I'm setting up for innovation because how this screen works is the, the screen works from an, the, the anti fog works by letting it warm up first. If you just turn it on and ram it in the airway, there's a good chance this thing's gonna fog up and on your screen it's gonna look, look like that and you've just lost your view. Okay. This is made for video. This is a VL tool. This is not a, this is not a, a video lensoscope, and then cross over to direct lensoscope. If you use a, this is, you can see how hyper angulated this blade is. You can only innovate with the, with the glide scope, truly by doing VL. Okay. Where the CMAC at our other hospitals, you can go, you can go direct and say, hey, I don't like what I see down here, but I see a great view on the screen. Mm -hmm. Or, thank you, or you can go VL and say, hey, I don't like what I see. I want to drop down or my, my screen got my lens got contaminated and i can go do and do direct okay that's the difference between a glide scope and a, and a c-mac so if i i was going to use this i would say hey hold my hold my ranger right here so it doesn't fall over all right we've already pre-checked pre our tube and everything you get your patient in position most common error with the with the ranger is people will take this and they will just ram it all the way down and that's the view they get and they say, why, why can't I see anything? What, what's going on? I'm going to say, you've buried your Ranger way too far. So. You actually follow the camera when you're going in? Absolutely. I, as soon as I get it through the, through the mouth, I do the scissor lift technique to open. You don't like ram open the mouth this way. <laughs> you break teeth. So I just do a posing thumb and index finger like that. Open up the mouth. I put this just right of center and I start coming down. So there's my uvula right there. My uvula points north, I wanna see that. Here's the tongue, and all the little buds right there on the tongue. I'm just walking my blade down, okay? As I rock my blade back, look at that beautiful view of the cords, all right? That view is way too close. That view is way too far away. There's the epiglottis structure here. So I wanna get that view, okay? I take my tube, I come from the right. As it goes down, I make sure my cuff does not hit their teeth, especially if this is a traumatic event. These teeth can rupture your cuff before you even get it in the, into the airway. As I come down, it's gonna hit the back of the posterior pharynx. I'm not even looking down here. My, my view is 100% right here. I start rocking my tube back, and now I just guide it directly into the vocal cords. All right, I'm not smashing the teeth. The blade isn't, it's not even really touching their teeth. And that is how I would pass this tube. Right here, because that stylet is so rigid, the back of the tube is, is hitting a, against the tracheal wall. So it's in there, and, and a lot of people say, man, I passed the tube through the cords, but now it's hitting the back of the trachea, and I can't pass my tube. And erroneously, they just pull the tube out. That's what this is made for with your, with your rigid stylet. The operator, or sometimes I could say, hey, pull my stylet back. I do it myself just so I have all the control, I don't lose it, and I'm watching it under, under video guidance. I'll move my fingers up, and I just pull my stylet back like that, and now my tube just sinks okay. in there beautifully. Okay. okay? Some people will hold, and they'll go in, and they'll just actually hold this like this, all right? And they can steer their ET tube just like this with their thumb, because macro movements, movements are micro movements at, at the end, and then in one, one motion, they do that. Either way is perfectly acceptable. So now I got 7.5, so I'd want that about 22 at the teeth under video guidance. A lot of people will now will pull this out under video guidance. I've got my tube. I'm going to say, hey, Spicoli, pull my stylet out. But with the rigid stylet, guys, you need to follow the angle of the chest. You do not pull this thing straight up. So I'm going to say, go ahead and pull my stylet out and just follow that bend around. Bring it down towards their feet. Beautiful. That was nice and smooth. 
I'm still at 22. Now I'll pull my camera out, pump it up, end title, BVM, secure it, get off the X, okay? You as the innovator, always, I would suggest, I always bag my own patients at least 10 times, okay? I'm good, I'm good. That way when I hand the bag to you and I'm off doing something else, I can come back about every couple of minutes and say, hey, let me, let me squeeze the bag a couple times. Underhand. Hey, that, that compliance feels exactly when I first tube them, we're good because your compliance versus your compliance versus my compliance, we're two diff three different people, different adrenaline, different techniques, different experience. Now I can just keep checking every now and then and go, hey, this feels good. Or hey, this, it's getting really hard to bag this guy. This was a baseball bat to the right side of the chest. What do you think's going on? Probably has a pneumo. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep bagging him. You're gonna go ahead and drop a needle, please. And then assume, oh, we confirm we have a, a pneumo. We've got air in our, uh, half filled, you know, saline flush. And as soon as you pull that needle out and, and drop that catheter in there, it's like, ah, oh, that's a lot better. And we're going to get about five to six, seven minutes out of that before we have to do that again. Okay. Before he gets to the trauma center, now he's going to get a chest tube. So that is how the, the Saturn or the rigid style that works. All right. Go ahead and make that happen. Replicate that gentlemen.